Welcome to this talk. Now, sadly, we are seeing an increase in colon cancer, in bowel cancer, in younger age groups in the under 50s. And I want to look at this and give a bit of background information on bowel cancer, particularly colon cancer, which is by far the most common form of cancer of the gastrointestinal tract. A bit of background on that because we need to have a higher index of suspicion that this may be occurring in younger people. So typically if a 30-year-old comes to the doctor with signs that may be colon cancer, uh, doctors often think, well, it's a 30-year-old, it can't be, but it could be. So I want to look at that uh, today. Really quite an important topic. Well, lives, lives clearly depend on it. Um, so um, colon cancer, particularly, the most, this is the most common form of bowel cancer. Now, breast is currently the most common form of cancer. Then prostate, uh, breast almost all in women, not all in women, almost all in women. Prostate cancer, uh, exclusively in men, of course. Prostate produces the uh, seminal component of the seminal fluid. Lung cancer, and then bowel cancer is the fourth. Then melanoma, the fifth, kidney and lymphoma of the, the lymphocytes uh, after that. So they're the most common. So it's the fourth most common cause of cancer. Um, cause of cancer deaths. So it causes, it's the second most common cause of death after, uh, after lung cancer. So lung cancer is the most common cause of death, then bowel cancer is the second. So even though there's fewer cases diagnosed, more patients die from it. Now, um, US data shows 10.5% of newly diagnosed colorectal cancers now occur in people younger than 50, and this is expected to carry on rising. So um, colorectal, the rectum's the last part of the colon, it's the rectum, then the anus. So uh, affecting the colon and, and the rectum. Now, I just want to look at some information first. They, they, they are, by the way, they, those statistics are from the American Cancer Society. But they also say this, um, uh, colorectal cancer is rising among people who are younger than 50, and the reason for this remains unclear. Um, well, there's many reasons for it, as we'll be seeing. And this is also reflected even, even it has to be said, in uh, JAMA, Journal of the American uh, Medical Association, rates of colorectal and other cancers are rising in young adults, puzzling researchers. So um, this is part of a trend, sadly, of many cancers occurring in, in younger age groups. So just before we get down into the, a lot of detail on the cause, I just want to run through some of the uh, things that might indicate that this is occurring, because we need a in higher index of suspicion at younger ages. Let's not just assume that this is a disease of the older people. It most certainly is not so what might be a warning sign or, or something that makes us a bit uh, concerned that this could be a problem well anemia is a classic red flag uh, symptom so um, in bowel cancer there may be insidious loss of blood resulting in anemia anemia being a reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood that can result in uh, sobe shortness of breath on exertion one of these appalling Abbreviations we use in healthcare, fatigue, pallor, paleness, um, pale, pale uh, fingernail beds, pale, pale conjunctivus. Um, so but obviously it should be diagnosed with a blood test. But anemia, especially in younger people, should always be explained. Is there a malignant cause of that anemia? Sadly, one that is sometimes missed. Abdominal pain and bloating. Well, of course, these can occur commonly. Uh, not necessarily malignant features, but they can occur in cancer. Diarrhea and constipation, again, can occur commonly, uh, but when we're starting to put things together, we, we might uh, want to take a medical opinion. Changes in normal bowel habits, so for example, loose, loose stools, constipation. And generally, the rule of thumb, if probably, you can't specify, but if these are going on for three weeks, uh, consult your doctor. Is, is probably the, the, the best rule of thumb. So obviously anyone can have diarrhea, constipation, can last for a few days. Uh, you know, is, these are just, this is just part of life, isn't it? But if it goes on consistently for, for three weeks, then consider taking a medical opinion on that. Catch this at an early stage because it goes without saying, don't need me to tell you, that the earlier this is caught, the more likely treatment is to be successful, of course. Um, per rectum bleed. Now, uh, PR bleeding, uh, the blood can be streaking. You can see blood on the toilet roll. The blood could be well mixed. Sometimes uh, blood is frank. That means it looks like blood. 
Uh, other times it's uh, dark and uh, tarry, which is uh, called melina, which is altered blood. That That's typically from bleeds high up in the gastrointestinal tract, maybe from the stomach or the duodenum, even from swallowing blood from a dental extraction. Um, so, But it, it, then it could be from the earlier parts of the colon as well. So a, a, any blood should always be taken seriously. So uh, bleeding, the most common cause <coughs> of <coughs> blood, of course, uh, on toilet paper is uh, is piles hemorrhoids um but again we need to check and make sure there's not something more ominous going on so if you see any of these symptoms don't worry too much about it but do take it in context and do consider seeing your doctor if if, if it's a concern but but blood blood should be anytime there's all ble- basically the rule is all bleeding should be explained so any bleeding should be explained. If it's because you've just cut yourself with a knife in the kitchen, then obviously you've explained it. If not, um, if it's the potential for pathological bleeding, a doctor should explain that. A, sh- a medical opinion should be should be taken on an unexpected bleeding. Bleeding between periods would be another example for different types of cancer. Pencil stools can occur, like just what it says, thin stools. Um, uh, not, not, not that common, um, just if it's a tumour that's very low down. Feeling of fullness after passing a stool is, is a fairly common one. Straining passing stool, abdominal and back pain, lumps or obstruction will probably be much later, well, would be later signs. Weight loss, typically a later sign. But what might be an earlier sign sometimes is DVT, a deep venous thrombosis. When someone has a cancer, it changes the uh, likelihood of the blood to clot. And uh, D- in any, any patient presenting with a new deep venous thrombosis whether it goes to the lungs causing a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot in the lungs or not, doesn't matter. Well, it matters because of the prognosis of that condition, but uh, where there's a DVT with or without pulmonary embolism, um, doctors should always consider the possibility of, of a cancer. Uh, many cancers can prevent uh, present as, as a deep venous thrombosis. So any of those conditions, especially if they're ongoing, do take medical opinion on that because colon cancer is very treatable in the early stages. Um, What causes this? Well, it's more common in people that are obese for a wide variety of metabolic reasons. We know this, we've known this for some time. And it's much less common in people who are physically active. So uh, lose weight, be physically active. That will reduce your chances of getting um, colon cancer. Um, It's more common in people with diabetes, mellitus type two. Diet. Now, we could talk about diet for a long time on this. Um, Let's just talk about it briefly. Um, Diet is a big factor in colon cancer. So uh, we want to have diets that are basically, usually we want diets that are high in fiber, uh, soluble fiber, water soluble fiber, non-water soluble fiber, um, fruits, vegetables, uh, fibrous legumes, uh, peas, beans, lentils, um, um, bran, flaxseed, you know, th- things that are high in fibre are, are, are generally considered good, uh, likely to reduce colon cancer. Big argument about red meats and things. For sure, uh, for, for, for a couple of decades now, I've been advising against too many processed meats. So, bacons, hams, um, smoked, smoked, smoked uh, preserved meats, uh, salami, you know, the preserved meat type of thing generally uh, is considered to be a, a risk factor. So fibre to protect um, pr- processed red meat as, as a risk factor. We'll leave diet there because it, it's, a, it's a long story and somewhat controversial. Uh, microbiome is important. So probiotics, they're the bacteria themselves. Prebiotics are things that feed the bacteria. So a wide variety of uh, fibres. And consider things like fermented foods. Vitamin D. Lack of vitamin D is a big risk factor for colon cancer. Uh, make sure you are vitamin D replete. If your vitamin D is low, you are more likely to get colon cancer. It's very, very simple. Um, easy to remedy. Uh, uh, recognised risk factor. Um, so low vitamin D is a risk factor. Being vitamin D replete is protective. Smoking is a risk factor. Uh, alcohol is a risk factor. Now, a new one, uh, microplastics also seems to be a risk factor. Uh, don't know too much research on that one yet, but it's not good. We've got too many microplastics in the diet. 
personal and family history, uh, Adematus. Uh, 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 so th this bit, um, I, I, I don't know, uh, Adeno. Adeno means um, to do with um, glandular tissue. So Adematus uh, polyps, polyps inside the colon. These can be taken out quite readily, but they increase the risk for colon cancer. Inflammatory bowel diseases are risk, so Crohn's, colitis. Uh, Lynch syndrome, uh, it used to be called hereditary uh, non polypopus colon cancer, um, genetic. You've either got the risk genes for that or you haven't. And uh, we need to be looking at MRA injections, messenger ribonucleic acid injections, mRNA injections. Um, and this... Um, there is quite a few plausible mechanisms here which we'll go on to look at. Um, I think I'm going to post that as a single uh, video because that's actually some quite important points there on um, what what is uh, causing colon cancer and how to recognise it early. Um, yeah, we'll leave that there. Then we'll come back and we'll look at this in more detail. Not that. That's a smudged piece of paper. We'll come back and look at this in more detail. And we'll also look at some uh, national data from the um, United Kingdom uh, indicating that there is more uh, bowel cancer year on year at the moment, which is a, a concern. But for now, thank you for watching.